you you let me believe that it's okay that I got five kids, I'm 40, but I'm making $100,000, so now I deserve to be with you. Because I want to sleep with you. Well, shit, tell me that. Well, most men won't, but I, 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 that's why I'm telling women. Like exactly. He, you having 50 men in your DMs doesn't mean you're a catch. No. You having a thousand men in your DMs is, does not mean you're a catch. Honestly, some of the most catchiest people are the ones you would never expect. Facts. Listen, it's the message right here. Black boy, tell me how you really feel. Because I just want to build with you. Black girl, tell me how you really feel. I want to keep it real with you. I want to live better, eat better. I want to love better, sleep better. Yeah, I want to feel so aligned. You're taking attributes of what he has going on in his life and you're applying it to your life as maybe you're not a peacock, maybe you're a penguin. You're using what he took and applying it to your own life. You think most men do that? Yes. Except, give me an example. <clears throat> I mean, it's a thousand times over. Even if we're just speaking of like um, a beauty influencer that I watch. She was talking about the difference between when she goes out with her natural hair versus long weave and the different approaches that she gets from each interaction. She's less likely to be approached when her natural hair is out versus when she's got hair down to her ass and it's a different color. It's the small things like that that make it harder for women, I feel like, to believe that you aren't acting like a peacock. Well, I mean, the, the question is, mm -hmm. uh, the question would then be like, what kind of men does she get, a, does she attract? So she attracts less men with natural hair, mm -hmm. but what kind and caliber of men are those? And then she attracts more men with the long, slick hair. What kind of caliber of men are those? That's true. I have no idea. But yeah, no, it is. And I think, again, between the colorism, between the natural hair, those are two totally different topics because we could talk about that all day long. Because I do feel like even in 2022, there's still a large gap when it comes to stuff like that. So, Yeah, and, and I think part of the problem, too, is some women who complain about these things, yeah. they complain about it because they're not attracted to the men who would, they wouldn't have to complain about it with. Yeah. Like, you're not attracted to the guy who likes, who prefers your natural hair. Yeah. So, like... That's why a lot of times there's a disconnect because it's like, I don't have success with black women and I love them in their natural hair, yeah. but she's over there in the corner complaining about future and not liking her with her natural hair. It's like, why don't you go where you're What's celebrated by black men? Yeah. I mean, that's a good question. That's a good, that's a good statement as well. Like when it comes to that kind of stuff, because you're right. Sometimes that guy who wants the natural hair isn't, hitting on what the woman may want. But again, it goes back to pop culture and how you feel and all this stuff because there's so many. It's crazy that we were taught when we were this little not to judge a book by its cover, but then we do it every single day in our lives. So I think the, the notion of somebody actually enjoying the hair that grows out of our head that we've had to create things like the Crown Act to make sure that we're not discriminated against on. It's just very like, I want to say it's confusing. It's very confusing because how do I know you actually truthfully like this? And it's not more than just a fetish or something like that. But I just, I feel like there's so many layers when it comes to stuff like that. I mean, so the, the fetish thing, you know, you can make the argument future who likes slick hair is fetishizing that. So yeah. Of course. It's 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 going to be like the kind and caliber of men that you're going towards. But I want to segue that into, you know, the 10 year challenge. Mm -hmm. okay. Have you have you seen a lot of these pictures? Yeah. In my experience, and maybe yours is different. 90 percent of the girls I've seen and fell off. Yeah. A cliff. Yeah. <laughs> and most of the dudes I've seen have gotten better. Yeah. They they they've started. They got some swag. They their glasses are off. Their beards connect now. <laughs> um, and you're hearing about a lot of hey big head DMs. Yeah, yeah. By the 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 the, the girl who was the baddie back in high school. Like, mm -hmm. 
What's going on? Wait, what? <laughs> What's the deal with that? Well, again, we talked about the romanticizing. I feel like sometimes for women, after they've gotten, like you said, when you get to the ring, when you get to the wedding, you've won. And then I feel like for a lot of women, that's it. We start having kids and I just look how I look and you better accept it. I really have seen that happen before. You know, you see women all the time with short hair and they just don't wear bras and they just look however. And I think sometimes that happens because, like you said, they've reached their top level of what they think is right. As opposed to men, I feel like I don't really know the answer for that part, but I feel like I can speak to women who have either lost themselves because they've reached their highest level or they've accomplished what they wanted and they've gotten what they wanted and they're comfortable because if we're going to unpack that too, being comfortable in a relationship will have you out here fucked up because you look like who done it and why and titties going to be down to the ground because you just are like, my man going to love me regardless. Think about it. Think about the girl who married her high school sweetheart. It doesn't happen often, but when it does, maybe she lets herself go because he's loved me since I was 15. How would he ever stop loving me? And that's why you have to continue to date the person and like realize that this is not the end. But I think that's the, I think that's a disconnect. I feel like when we were talking about hierarchy, women sometimes feel like they reach their highest level as opposed to a man who doesn't have that same, you don't get, as a man, I don't feel like you get the same kudos for being a wife or being a husband and being a father. You don't get that. Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> it's like yeah. in prison now. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, going back to when I was saying, like, you can't tell women shit these days. Um, you, it, it kind of ties into love me as I am. Mm -hmm. and, and it doesn't matter how I look, whatever, whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. A big thing right now is body positivity. Mm -hmm. A lot of men are mm -hmm. sick of it. Mm -hmm. They're tired of it. They They feel like women are offering us bullshit on a plate and expecting us to eat it like it's a five-star meal. Yeah. Explain that to me. What's going on? Body positivity, that term can, can turn into such a toxic behavior so quickly that I don't think we're realizing it. Yes, I should be positive about my stretch marks and my rolls and my whatever, but also am I being healthy about it? Because that's what you mean. That's why they're sick of it because they're just like, I look like this. I don't need to fix it. You need to love me regardless. And that's not the case because even now, like in my personal experience, I'm like, how did you get here? And I feel like sometimes People in general get to this spot of like, holy shit, I'm huge now, but this is body positivity because whoever named celebrity, insert celebrity name, says that they look like this and it's okay for me to look like this. And I feel like sometimes body positivity just is, one, it can be a good way to connect a community of people who need to be connected because as women, there's a lot of pressures to look a certain way and to be a certain way and to be perfect and slim and no cellulite, but also it creates unhealthy habits and it, it also takes away accountability, which I know is why sometimes men get tired of it because it's like you're not even holding yourself accountable anymore for taking care of yourself because this is real life. Like if you don't take care of yourself, you could be dead tomorrow. So... I think that's why. I think the other problem that men have with it is it's it's very one-sided. Oh, definitely. Because I can look like that, but you can't look like that. Or you can't be short. Or okay. you can't have a little dick. <laughs> or you can't have a light voice. Yeah. Or you can't, like, so I can still, yeah. you, your beard got to connect, mm -hmm. but I can be 300 pounds. Yeah. So, like, wait, what, what do women need to do? What do men need to do? In terms of body positivity? Yeah. Whew. Oh. So women, again, I feel like a lot of 
what our standards today are based off of these artificial people that belong on social media or that are from social media because that's where a lot of I feel like the idealisms of like what you're supposed to be and what your partner is supposed to be come from so one get off social media go look at normal people because that'll help you um as women probably just accept the fact of your type may not be who you're right for who's right for you um I feel like even myself, I romanticized a, a type of man for so long. And as soon as I let that shit go, other things happened. So maybe he is short. Maybe he is bald. Maybe his dick is tiny. But honestly, like they say, it's about the motion of the ocean, not the size of whatever. Um, and then for men, I think it's going to take up on both sides. Understanding, understanding that like, this woman isn't just saying body positivity all the time just to, you know, sugarcoat what she's going through or give herself an excuse. She's saying it because there's something that she needs your help with and on both sides. You know, I feel like, though, for women, a lot of it is more image based on what images we see out there versus men. They get. You become a list. Men become a list at all times. He can't, like you said, he can't be short. He can't be fat. He can't, all these things. So I think that's the difference. And I think that it all just takes understanding and just really knowing what and who you're getting involved with. Mm. I think that's a really good point. Mm. Especially like you, you, you put some of the accountability on women, which is rare. So I commend you on that. Oh my God, <laughs> yes. Um, so I think you're in a unique position to answer this question because you work in the media space. Mm -hmm. Why is Mr. Kevin Samuels <laughs> yeah. famous? He's famous because he says some shit that nobody else would say. If you think about it, if you look at our long history of media, it's always the people who say things that seemingly to be outlandish that become the famous ones. Um, now, whether I agree with his opinions on everything is another story, but he's famous because he's just going to say it. He's just going to do it. And there's people feeding into it. How is he going to tell me what a man wants from me if he's never been a woman, you know, and there's people feeding into these theories about him or whatever. And then you're not seeing what his life is like either. He's just a man sitting in front of a computer. We're all just listening to it. Like some dummies sometimes, honestly. Do most women know what a man wants? No. So why would he need to be a woman to be able to tell you what a man wants? Ooh, let me see. Why would he need to be a woman to tell you what a man wants? <sighs> he wouldn't. But again, we have to get out of this generalization thing because we generalize what a man would want and what a woman would want. I don't know what you want. You don't know what I want. But if I'm going based off of this dude sitting in his house to tell me how to get a partner, it's already messed up from the beginning because it's individualized per person, right? But that I would agree with you if... It wasn't the case that if you polled 10 women mm -hmm. to explain their ideal man, they would, ex they would explain the same dude. Yeah, they Tupac would. with a PhD who makes six figures and is six foot tall. Yeah. Exactly. So, so if he fits mm -hmm. that, or if men who fit that are telling you what they want, mm -hmm. why wouldn't more women listen? Because you're saying, okay, so you're saying the list and that all 10 women may have the same list. But they don't know what they want. We're just fantasizing, just like the man is fantasizing what you want. You don't actually know what you want because one thing for certain is we're chasing these ideals of people when you don't even know what their soul looks like. Like you just literally just out here like, oh, he got a big dick and he got money. I got to be with him. But you don't know what he's like for real. So the idea of any part of that, whether it's Kevin Samuels or a controversial woman speaking, it's bull. 
I believe. But I mean, from from my point of view, it seems like that's what he's saying. Yeah. It, it seems like, you know, and what a lot of men understand is that 99% of women want 1% of men. That's right? true. And because you want 1% of men, here is what those men want. So if you're really interested in that 1% of men, wow. this is how you become attractive to that 1% of men. So um, he also says that, you know, for example, the average of best girl, um, she was saying that after she became a dog groomer and started making six figures, she couldn't respect her boyfriend or the men that she dated who made $30,000 a year. For real? So, and that, that was why he was like your average at best, because he was essentially saying that the men you want wouldn't want you. Oof. So why aren't you more invested in, why aren't you more interested in building union and partnership with the men you qualify for? Yeah. What's the problem with that? You said qualify for. Qualify for, yes. Oh, my God. But you tell me, you say qualify for, and you, you know, say she's no longer attracted to her boyfriend because she makes 30, he makes 30,000 and she makes six figures. Why won't she qualify for someone else or someone higher up? Because the curriculum is different. Her going from making thirty thousand to a hundred thousand doesn't make her a better catch for a man who makes six figures. No. And just I mean, and you know, men understand that if I want Halle Berry, I have to make a certain amount of money, yeah. right? But for some reason, women don't understand that in the reverse. They think that if I'm if I now make six figures, it doesn't matter that I'm forty with five kids. Six figure men should not want me. When men don't grade women on the same curriculum as as women grade. Uh, men. I feel like you're kind of right. I'll agree with you just a tiny bit. Where am I wrong? I also, well, because you have to, again, look at what we're in right now. I literally can go on Instagram, look at a DM from some random dude, and he gonna be like, I don't need to see your face. I just need to see your vagina. And I'm going to pay you $10,000. That's where the irrational thoughts come from. Because the, because society... So you're saying it's irrational. Sometimes. Okay. And also... Uh, you know, you just... Uh, anyways. Um, yeah, sometimes it can be irrational. Because men sometimes feed into that. You... You let me believe that it's okay that I got five kids, I'm 40, but I'm making $100,000, so now I deserve to be with you. Because I want to sleep with you. Well, shit, tell me that. Well, most men won't, but I, won't. I, I, that's why I'm telling women. Like exactly. He, you having 50 men in your DMs doesn't mean you're a catch. No. You having 1,000 men in your DMs is, does not mean you're a catch. Honestly, some of the most catchiest people are the ones you would never expect. Facts. So, I mean, of course, none of that matters, but the way everything has been built up now, I can go on a sugar daddy website and lie about who I am and get everything I want, or I could be who I am and still get everything I want. So, of course, there's not the same curriculum, but it's also up to men sometimes, regardless of age, to take responsibility for that. We incentivize the wrong behavior. You do. You literally tell me sometimes I can meet you tomorrow. We can go to dinner. You pay my mortgage, my all my utilities, and all I got to do is pop some pussy every now and again. And then you want me to say... But shouldn't the woman know that that's unsustainable? Hmm? Shouldn't she know that that's unsustainable? Like, I can do that between 20 and 30, and after that, the sugar daddy's going to dry up because they going back to the 20 and... 25 year olds. <laughs> That's not always the case though. But I'm saying, yeah. like, if you had 10 sugar daddies between 20 yeah. and 30, mm -hmm. between 30 and 40, you might have five. Yeah. Is the point. But somebody's still obtaining my lifestyle, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I don't care if they dwindle down halfway. Somebody's still taking care of this. Mm -hmm. So I just think it's a layered conversation because we can say the curriculum thing, but sometimes you just gotta stop acting like that too. Especially these old ass men. And that is a generalization that I'll keep. So answer this for me. Mm -hmm. 
if you're talking to a group of five girls or six girls, seven girls, they'll say, you know, um, my circle is full of bad bees. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. this one's a doctor, that one's a lawyer. Mm-hmm. Um, this one is a esthetician. This one is this, this one, they're, they're boss bitches and they walk out and they got the stilettos on, mm-hmm. but they're all single. Yeah. Why? Because, and I, I don't know, I've had this conversation before, so this is where I'm getting this idea from. You have, back in what, the 1950s was still when women had to be married to even have like driver's license, whatever. It was something crazy that I don't feel like nowadays it's obtainable sometimes to be both because the, yeah, there are a lot of bad bees out here with degrees and doing this, but it's hard to obtain both because we've never been taught to obtain both. I mean, personally in my circumstance, I grew up with a bad B who just happened to be married, but it was not a successful relationship because on the other side of that, if you do find somebody, is he going to be okay with the caliber of woman that you are? Because a lot of times you see it happen and you see her finally find her Boaz and then Boaz is mad at you because you work long hours and make more money than him. It's still a thing of the man's ego or whatever. It could be a plethora of things, but I will say, I think that's one of the main reasons because we're still at the point where we're still accepting that women can be bad bees and they can have degrees and have nice jobs and cars and take care of themselves. But back then I needed you. I needed you to obtain my lifestyle. And I also was meant to stay at home, take care of the kids and shut the fuck up. That's not the case now. And men are trying to, some men are still trying to make that happen. They're trying to make that happen with this girl who just spent seven years being a doctor. And now you want me to just shut up and listen to you while trying to be the bad B. That's Mm, But the problem with that is that if you ask her what kind of man she wants, she still wants a traditional man. So why can't that traditional man want a traditional woman? What's the problem? What's tradition? Um, well, when you ask women, they say, I want a man to provide and protect. And you ask men, they want a woman who's, you know, Kevin Samuels calls it, fit, feminine, and friendly. Yeah. But the doctors and the lawyers struggle with fit, feminine, and friendly mm-hmm. a lot of times. But they still want provide and protect. Yeah. Well, because... I'm, I'm, I'm sure you've seen this, but there's a lot of cases where these uber strong women just say at the end of the day, I just want somebody to go home to and to take the responsibility away from me. And I think part when of they're it, 30 and 40, <laughs> when they're 30 and 40, yes, but you like right now we're still 20 something. Oh, I feel like we're in the largest race of our life. Some people are starting families. Some people are starting businesses. We know millionaires at this age. So at 20, nobody's thinking of that for real. Well, in some cases. So I think that's where it comes from. Because right now, think about it. Every time you go on Instagram, anybody from our age demographic is grounded, is out there getting it, is working seven jobs. Is lying. Is starting business. Is lying. They are lying, but... They're not everybody last year became an entrepreneur. Everybody became this, that, and the third. So yeah, when I'm 30, maybe that's when I want you to lighten my load a little. That is what I think. So obviously, like we said kind of in the beginning, there is a gap between black men and black women. Yeah. Um, what role did black women play in creating that gap? None. No, I'm just playing. Um what role did black women play? Well, again, I think it goes back in history as well. Um, not knowing how to coexist once that man has broken whatever relationship. I personally think that even now, regardless of the disconnect, when generally, typically, when there's a conflict between a black man and a black woman, sometimes it ends up where the black woman no longer wants to even speak to the black man or so busy bashing that black man that you can't find your way back. 
and then you raise your children to hate their dad because X, Y, and Z, or you raise your children or whatever, you know, things happen. So I think that's where it happened for black women. And then is your second part for black men? No. No. Oh no. man. Yeah. Well then yeah. Yeah, because we talk about black men. Oh. No, when I when when it's a black man I ask him. Oh. Um but I I'm very interested to know because the, the the popular idea is that black men messed up the black family, right? No. And we can't create the black family by ourselves. So why is no. the idea that we could mess it up by ourselves? Yeah. All right. So I, I'm always interested to know, okay, what part of the dysfunction are women willing to own? Well, that's part of it. And, you know, even like destroying the black family has nothing to do with black people. It never has anything, has had anything to do with black people, I feel like, because it happened through slavery. And then it happened when, you know, you get rewarded for being a single parent or whatever it may be, because as crazy as that lady is, Candace Owens, she makes a good point and she was telling people that one that that one thing let's be mindful that one yeah. thing <laughs> that one thing when she said you know the government came in and made sure they created the divide and what continued that divide i feel like is a lack of healing on the black woman's side because you think about it one black man hurts i'll use me for example one black man hurt my feelings five years, seven years ago. And so I take that on every single black man that comes after him. And then I have a black son and I teach him not to be like that black man. And that continues a disconnect because I never healed from that and I never had that conversation. So that, that, that's, um, I think you segue perfectly into this question and then we'll close it up. Okay. What kind of son do you want to raise? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, my God. Children. Oh. Uh, well, in 12 years when I have children, um, I want my black son to be like who I potentially believe, obviously, is going to be his father, um, which is very vulnerable, but also able to navigate your feelings in a healthy way because I mean I'm a woman and I still can't navigate my feelings in a healthy way um one who isn't afraid to have those hard conversations but knows how to go into it with a certain amount of tact and ability to communicate um one that actually does care about black women because you know oftentimes we make these black well yeah we make these black men who hate black women. And that's just so crazy to me because you've got a whole black ass mama. But uh, one who has compassion, one who has strength, but one who also understands the importance of having relationships that matter because we get so caught up in having just a relationship just because with anybody, not even romantic. Um, and one who's strong. And not the definition of strong, because the definition of strong is fucked up when it comes to black people, but one who finds his own strength and isn't afraid because there's so many obstacles black men have to try to over, you know, overcome and overlap. And it's a scary world out here, even to be a black man. You know, one of the obstacles that black men have to overcome, a lot of black men, unfortunately. Yeah. They're black ass moments. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a yeah. lot of the dysfunction starts with mom. So, um, and that's a lot why I the, said the, about the healing. The, the, the popular phrase you hear is that Dad, you got a black mom. Well, that's the reason. But yeah. does that, while black men heal, because I absolutely preach that, um, does there need to be some empathy from black women and understanding about that? Definitely. And it's going to be hard. It's going to be very hard because, again, We've been conditioned to see black men as these untouchable things. It's crazy that, you know, the world sees black people as people who don't experience pain. But then we as women are like, that black man should not experience pain. So there's going to be a lot. There's going to have to be a lot of empathy. And like I said before, I'm always preaching about the therapy because you never know what kind of healing can happen when you just let somebody else help you. 
that's not a part of this equation.